You can help me solve a mystery. I can certainly try. Who's gone missing this time? It's not who, but what. Mid scales, the ones she made for her workshop. I borrowed them to teach the little ones about weight, and shortly after the lesson, well, they vanished. My first thought was that they'd taken them off somewhere to play, but when I asked, they swore they had nothing to do with their having disappeared, which mm. almost certainly means they had everything to do with it. Perhaps a visit from Sid will jog their memories. <laughs> I think it just might. Thank you. I don't like to imagine that my pupils would lie to me. But if they have, I'll have no choice but to discipline them accordingly. They were in the atrium when I last saw them. As always. in this situation, Clive. You can bloody well get me out of it. I need a hand with a recipe. Are you sure it's me you're looking for? I'm not much of a cook. I'm all the cook will be needing. Thank you very much. What I want from you is a little of your time, right? Oh, and uh, perhaps your sword. You remember Ivan's stew, right? Well, despite <laughs> the look of the thing and that awful stench, people wolf it down. Really? So I thought I'd try making one of these supposed masterpieces myself. Had a peek at the book and gave it a go, but, well... It wasn't as straightforward as you'd hoped. Ivan had the same problem. Yeah, but this is my blooming kitchen, and I will not be outdone. So if you don't want to be seen as playing favorites, I suggest you lend me a hand. Okay. I've never been one to play favorites, Molly. And I would be only too happy to lend you a hand. So, what's on the menu this time? A fried mortress of skyworm. That's one heck of a name, innit? <laughs> Recipe seemed easy enough to an old hand like myself. Thought I'd followed it to a tea. Only, turns out skyworm livers and drake's mint are not what I thought they were. At least I hope they're not, given the rancid mess they made. Ivan said the recipes in the culinary pilgrimage date back centuries. Who's to say the ingredients even exist anymore? Well, that's a question for a scholar, wouldn't you say? Perhaps you know of one? Kindly old fella who haunts the shelves, maybe? <laughs> Fine. I'll go and speak to Harpocrates. Perhaps he'll know something. And if he does, I'll see if I can find your ingredients for you. So you do oh, that. Lest we forget, you've got a reputation to uphold. Like, the scorpions tell us about scorpions. Rutherford? Wasn't that the name of my uncle's manservant? 
Why would he be at Martha's rest? Just... Is everything all right, Goots? You seem more discomposed than usual. Oh, I don't know what that means, but, but I'm in a bit of a muddle. Oh, I think Nan might be in trouble, and she's... <laughs> it's all right. You can tell me. <sighs> there was a trader came by. One of our usuals, like... Said he'd heard some... Rotten rumours about her down Dally Mill Way. Folk are saying she's been selling to bandits and cutthroats and that. I mean, she's fond of a chance to make a coin or two, aye, but... But she'd never do business with baddies. Especially not the kind who go hurting people who haven't done out. I wanted to ask her about it myself, but... I'm scared she'll give us a tongue lashing. <laughs> she'd never give your tongue a lashing, though, would she? Don't worry. I'll speak to her. Oh, thanks, Clive. You'll let me know what she says, won't you? Of course. I'm sure it's all just a misunderstanding. Dead. Now she's still in the bathrooms. Besides me. What's the trouble, Vegas? I say we should just tell Miss Shirley. You'll get us all straight. I'm telling you, I can fix them. Uh oh. What'd the three of you do this time? Sid! Out of your studies, I see. And what is that? It's not a set of scales, is it? No. Of course it isn't. Well, not anymore, it's not. <gasps> oh! And just how long hasn't it been one? We're sorry. <laughs> but we didn't break them. We just dis dismembered them. Just like Miss Mididol showed us. Miss Mididol? And why would she have you dismembering her creations? Because that's the only way to become a ninja near. Miss Mididol huh? said, the best way I see how something worked is to take it apart and put it back together again. Well, then, your work is already half done. Carry on. Uh, I don't think they don't want to put it back together. I think that's why they're that. stuck here. The taking apart was easy enough, but it's the putting back we can't work out. Speak for yourself. The heavy thing goes at the bottom. So then... <laughs> then... Um... You three need to learn to take responsibility for your actions. So let's have a look at these parts with fresh eyes, shall we? Okay. All right. Everything here was once part of Miss Mididol's scales. Every piece has its own role to play, and each is just as important as the others. If even one of them is missing, the scales won't work. So let's think about what those roles might be. You already know one of the pieces. The body. Its role is to support everything else. But what of the others? So we got the uh, arms, pants. I don't know what to do. This is called the arm. Why do you suppose that is? It doesn't look much like an arm. You're right. It looks more like a wing. <gasps> like a chocobo wing! You've ridden a chocobo before, haven't you, Sid? Will you yeah. teach me to ride one one day? <laughs> I'll think about it. ADHD. Now, what do arms do? Hold things. So wait, maybe this arm holds things too? Good thinking. 
You're on the right track. These round parts are called the pans. You all know what a pan is, don't you? I do. Molly uses them in the kitchens to fry bangers. But these aren't for frying bangers, you idiot. They're for weighing stuff. <laughs> what if I wanted to weigh Gooch? I don't think he'd fit on that little thing. <laughs> Probably not. What are the chains for? Holding the pans up? Well spotted. Which means something must hold the chains up in turn. This tiny piece is what's called a cogwheel, or gear. Have you ever seen one before? I have. Miss Minidol's dungeon is full of them. Most are on the floor. She puts them in all her inventions. They spin round and round and round and round and... That's right. They're very useful when you want to make things move. Do you remember if there was anything on the scales that moved? I remember the arm moved when I tried weighing an apple. And then somebody ate it. Not my fault. You shouldn't have tried weighing it before lunch. We know what part's supposed to move and how it's supposed to move. So, let's put the pieces together first, see what doesn't move, and then stick the cogwheel to that. Not a bad idea. You see, it's not so difficult. You're misleading him. Fine. So, now that we've taken stock of the parts and learned what they do, what do you think? I think we've got it. Then here's what we'll do. You tell me what goes where, and I'll put the scales together. Well, obviously you need to start with the body. All the other pieces fit onto it, don't they? And the arms go on the body, just like real arms. Or wings, if you're a chocobo. And then the arms hold the pans by the chains. Very good. Let's see if that works. Ah, all finished. Yes, we did it. Well, with Sid's help. <laughs> oh, I just put the pieces together. It was you three engineers who showed me how. Engineers. Not That's engineers. right. We're Miss Mididol's hairs. Her hairs? <laughs> yeah. Her hairs, hairs are there. for the future. She's showing hairs us a secret head? now so we can help out the hideaway when we're older. What do you think, Sid? Are you almost ready? Uh, far from. With a little more help from Miss Mididol and Miss Shirley. I'd say it won't be long at all. <laughs> you hear that? It won't be long. Until then, though, do try to be honest with Miss Shirley. <laughs> hey, look! We never used the cogwheel! You don't think Sid forgot about it, do you? Or he left it so that you would try to figure it out. Come on, engineer, you gotta figure out where it goes. This one, but no use south of table. Gotta go that way anyway. solve the mystery it was as you thought the children had the scales or the parts of them at least they dismantled them to see how they worked oh no mid will have my head thankfully she won't 
This might even have been her idea. Although I was the one who ended up teaching the lesson. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Sid. I know how busy you are. I shall see that the children are properly punished. Please, there's no need. Mid seems to have taken the three of them under her wing. She's even calling them her heirs. She'd have them follow in her footsteps. And her father's. I see. Sid, do you know why Mid has been spending so much time at the hideaway of late? She told me it was because her studies have been interrupted by events in Canva. Is that not true? No, it isn't. No? The university offered her a commission. In exchange for full tuition, room, and board, they asked her to oversee the design of several new war engines. Oh. To anyone else, it would be an opportunity. But to Mid, who lost both her parents to war, it was a bitter pill. One she was none too keen to swallow. But that yeah. should come as no surprise. She's only ever cared about bringing people hope. The very last thing war can be said to do. Which explains her airs. She's working to give them a better life. And so should I. What's the odd engineering lesson? Ah, oh, you've given them far more than that. And I'm sure they're very grateful. Norseman Harpocrates, I've come to pick your brain if you don't mind. It's about the book you lent Ivan. Ah, Valisthea, a culinary pilgrimage, a classic. One of my favorites, in fact. The young man did a wonderful job with the Chancellor's stew. I do hope we shall be able to sample more such marvels in due course. That's actually why I'm here. I don't suppose you know where I might find Skyworm livers and Drake's mint. Ah. So the fabled Sanbriquois delicacy is next on the menu. Delightful. The descriptions of fried mortress never fail to make my mouth water. Oh. Now, but what are they? Skyworm is a somewhat antiquated name for the wyvern. Their ground livers being the paste from which the mortress is made. Oh. Dragon livers. Okay. How very Sanbriquois. One would have thought the disciples of Bahamut would have a touch more reverence for their icon's brethren, but apparently not. So, I believe the specific dragon the recipe demands is the blueback wyvern, said to be the very color of the sea beside which it resides. So we know where to look for our liver. But what about the drake's mint? Saint's bonnet in contemporary parlance, a herb which grows along the North Reach coast. I gather that one can locate the cheerful yellow flowers by their heady scent alone, so I'm sure you'll have no trouble finding them. I may add that people once believed game was best served with the flora that sustained it in life, in which regard oh. fried mortress of Skyworm is undoubtedly a typical dish of the time. Meaning that if I find one, I find the other. To Northreach, then. Best of luck, Clive. And do save me a bite once the dish is complete. <laughs> Seems the hideaways lost its own. Lady Karen. How's business? Not nearly as foul as the weather. You're <laughs> doing good trade then. Both in and out of the hideaway. Hmm. Can't complain. Wait, what exactly are you getting at? Not once in five long years do you pay my affairs half a care, but here you are today raking me over the coals like a bloody popotto. Just asking. Out of interest. All right. I'm here because I was told that certain rumors have been circulating uh, about you selling weapons to brigands. Oh, are you? 
And who was it who knows me so well as to tell tales of my evil exploits? <laughs> I, I, I didn't exactly hear firsthand. All I know is that someone in Dalamil has been spreading word to that effect. And what? You believe it? You think I'm profiting off the blood of innocence, do you? Got it. Look, I've done things I'm not proud of. Might be there were a time when I turned a blind eye to the wretchedness of the world so I could line my pocket. Okay. But that woman is no more. And you'd know that if you'd ever paid the slightest bit of notice. Are you right, Lady Karen? I apologize. It was wrong of me to doubt you. No, it was. No. I reckon you've got better things to do than pointing your do-gooding finger at a poor old woman. <laughs> of course. Good day. What? I spoke with Lady Karen. What did she say? That the rumors were unfounded, and that I was a fool for thinking they might hold any truth, along with some other things that made her feelings clear. And while it sounds like she may have done things she regretted in her past, she says those days are behind her. Oh, well, that's good. I knew Nan wasn't caught up in out bad. Why would people say she was? What did she ever do to them? It's not right. <laughs> no, it's not. But people do things for all sorts of reasons. Perhaps we'll never know. Well, I'm going to find out. That trader, he said they were all talking about her in Dalimil. So that's where I'm going. I'll find someone who'll tell me. You'll see. Oh dear. Are you sure that's wise? Whoever's spreading these rumors means Karen ill. Oh, right. Well, that's why you'll be coming with me, isn't it, Clive? <laughs> I suppose it is. Oh, goats. for hire perchance because I have a mind to make a killing figuratively I hope well yes and no a passing caravan carried with it a rumor most fortuitous for one in my trade that an elder dread Evis had been sighted in the fields of Carava. dread Evis are aggressive beasts compelled as they are to acts of violence few survive to maturity but those that do Develop a hide of phenomenal value. A hide you want to sell? Eventually, yes. Though I would have it tanned first that it might be crafted into marvels, the likes of which the world has never seen. Dread Evis skin is a rare thing indeed. But the worked hide of a well aged beast. <laughs> now, that oh. would fetch such coin that Gilbot himself might weep with envy. Bring me that beast's skin, and I will share with you the bounty of our combined labors. Sounds like fun. All right. I'll hunt your Evis. Of course you will. When one lives in such troubled times, it is a fool who lets opportunity slip his grasp. Leave Tabor through the east gate, but take the path that branches west. Once you reach the checkpoint at Tovany, you are a mere stone's throw from the fields of Carava. I eagerly await your safe and above all triumphant return.
careful how you pack that leather. Any creases or scratches will bring down your life. You there, this strapping lad. Finally, no one was paying me the slightest heed. Is something wrong? At the university, the students would hang on my every word. Sadly, this far from home, I'm just a vagrant greybeard. The university? You're a scholar. A specialist in ancient cultures, the most accomplished in all Valisthea, some have said. Not that I look the part in these tattered rags. Oh. In my heyday, no obstacle could have kept me from my studies. Yet here I am, a wizened windbag, bested by the many steps of Tabor. The answers I seek lying just beyond my enfeebled reach. Would you do an old man a kindness and brave the stairs in my stead? You'll be amply rewarded, of course. Sure. Climb the stairs and... And memorize a few inscriptions for me. Uh, assuming you know your letters, that is. Uh, some courteous soul is rumored to have carved clues to Tabor's rich history into stones dotted about the village. Uh, oh. Three of them, to be precise. One each to the north, south, and east. Yeah, I'm here in the hope that those carvings might shed light on a riddle I've been pondering for some time. Okay. Namely, the otherwise undocumented origins of Tabor's unique people. Uh, people quite unlike those of neighboring lands. I can't promise I'll remember everything perfectly. Remember what you can. I'll piece together the rest. Make for the domed pavilions, and you'll have no trouble finding the stones. How are those new boots treating you? of the crystal first stones of Tabor sick holy thy noble blood till ends mother's labor no history would be complete without mention of the mother crystals so it's these stones to Canva and the rest of the boxes to Dalaman Have you noticed the elder has been coughing less of late? Oh, very good sign. <laughs> Wonders of the golden plains, lay your roots in stone. We kind recall thy noble past to be kind hearts of home. What golden plains might the wanderers have called home, I wonder? This inquiry's been hard to find since the sky's turned. It has indeed. Can't blame the beast. Oh. Children of the hunters, now tillers of the land, reap her promised blessings and give grace her gracious hand. Farmers must have settled here in Tabor. I should speak to the old scholar before I forget everything I've read. How are those new boots treating you? Careful how you pack that leather. Any creases or scratches will bring down the price. Who is he?
No, I've lost an old man. Tell me where he is. considering their age. Oh, what that I could have seen them for myself. Oh, come, oh, don't tease me now. What did you learn of this place and its people? Uh, let's start with the engraving to the south, shall we? Oh, what did it say? Uh, Guardians, of the Crystal. Guardians of the Crystal, the first stones of Tabor. Sacred hold thy noble blood till ends the mother's labor. I'm pretty sure that was it. Fascinating. It would seem the founders of this city were descendants of those fallen charged with protecting the mother crystals. But oh, whatever could have driven the guardians so far from their sacred charges, I wonder. The engraving to the north is next, I think. Wanderers of the Golden Plains, lay your roots in stone. With pride recall thy noble past, and make these rocks a home. Or, I think that was it, at least. No doubt you're right. There are vestiges of nomadic customs in Tabor its guardian roots could never account for. Huh. This is proving most enlightening. Now, for the final stone. Okay. Children of the hunters, now tillers of the land, reap her promised blessing and give praise her gracious hand. That's all three. And so we add primitive farmers to Tabor's founding peoples, the final piece of the puzzle. Three engravings, one for each of the three peoples to have settled Tabor in ancient times. Oh. Guardians of the Mother Crystal, wanderers from across the plains, and last, but certainly not least, hunters turned farmers. Little wonder it was so difficult to trace the roots of Tabor's culture. Those roots reached down through three distinct traditions. Nonetheless, one cannot help but wonder why this fact is not better known among scholars given that the stones stand here for all to see. Probably can figure out what they meant. Too many stairs, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> Too many by far. Here, yeah, and thank you. Quiz complete. That was easy. Oh, no. 
Both of you are there. Pogarty said I should be able to find what I'm looking for somewhere nearby. Light blue dragons and bright yellow flowers. Should be easy enough to spot. Be safe. Oh, there's the blue dragon. <laughs> That's damage. D3, that should be a trophy. For that one. Raptor liver. And the dragon talon. That's the wyvern's liver. Now I just need to find the herbs. Bright yellow with a heady scent. Keeps two herbs and spices. Herbs. I think that's everything Molly needs to resurrect her recipe. Better head back. Marcus, is that... It is you. Then you received my letter. Yep. I am Sebastian Rutherford, chief steward of your Lord Uncle's estate. Kirk. Of course. We met once before. Yes, my lord. Thank you for coming. And what was so sensitive that you couldn't put it in writing? A thousand apologies, my lord. I did not mean to offend. I merely... But it's right. you person. Continue. I am here at Martha's Rest, at the behest of your Lord Uncle. Oh. Tasked with learning what I am able of the realm's current state of affairs. Oh. And what I have learned is grim. The fall of the Mother Crystals has left Storm in a state of utter disarray. Yeah, we know that. The subsequent darkening of the heavens has only made things worse. Akashic attacks, once unthinkable, are now commonplace. Yep, we know that. The gears of governance have ground to a halt, and without a steady hand on the tiller, we know all that. The realm threatens to drift into utter chaos. Your lord, uncle, uh, however, believes there is a way to avoid this fate. And okay. is determined to see it set in motion. How? That sounds like quite the undertaking. It is. Hence my having enlisted the aid of several colleagues serving the seven high houses. Alas. Alas. I have lost contact with two of those colleagues already. Oh. They are both able-bodied and trained in the sword, yet in these dark times, even that may not prove sufficient to keep a man safe on the road. So you want me to find them? I'll need to know where they went. One I sent to investigate the Republic, the other the old imperial capital of Oriflam. That doesn't exactly narrow it down. 
I suppose I'll start in Dalamil and work my way east. Thank you, my lord. I shall pray for your success and safety. It's not going to be easy finding one man in an entire Republic. Let's hope someone here has seen something. It shouldn't be too hard to find goods. Are the bad men going to come back? The gentlemen of the town guard is back. Fuck! How the hell did they... Where is that big old... The vineyard is still sold. Could be I know something. Hey, Clive! Listen! I found someone who says he's heard the rumors about Nan. Have you? Go on. Tell him what you told me. All right. It's like I said. A wizened old crone by the name of Karen's been selling steel to whoever will pay her price, be they knight or knave. Says the more swords and spears she puts in people's hands, the more war they'll wage. And the more war being waged, or call for swords and spears. And who like will they all turn to to keep them in steel? Why, the good Reaper herself. <laughs> and you've seen this Reaper at work? Aye, it just so happens I have. You'll find really? her right here, plying her trade most days. So here in Delamil. Carrots are here. Where exactly? She has a stall here in the market. But if you're not the patient type, you can probably find her at her storehouse on the edge of town. But it'd be a bolder man than me that braved that particular nest of vipers. Feeling bold, traveler? I hope so, for your sake. Now, if that's all, I have places to be. Sorry to have kept you. Go check the stall. I'll go to the storehouse. You don't think Nan's the Reaper, do you? Well, unless she's discovered the secret of how to be in two places at once. Eh? What do you mean? Lady Karen hasn't left the hideaway in weeks. So who has been running this stall he spoke of? Good question. I'll go and have a look. And I'll visit this storehouse on the edge of town. All right, but be careful, Clive. Okay. You too, Goots. Time to brave the viper's nest. Totally sounds like a trap. Except by the uh, merchant. Just you, is it? <laughs> Thought I might have laid it on a bit thick. It was a fairly unconvincing tale. So, yep. what now? That's up to you. Die a slow death, or a quick one. Or I just kick Boys, your butt. He's all yours, but that sword is mine. <laughs> you can't have him. Leave now, or we could pretend this didn't happen. Are there any of you that...
can't believe you folks got the wrong person. Was easy. Oh, you've done it now. Oh, really? Go on. Tell me what I've done. Slaughtered you. When the Borgwin finds out you've killed his men, he'll have your head. Cut. He only wanted that bull of a manservant, the dim one always clinging to Karen's skirts. You weren't even supposed to be here who the hell are you anyway I'm what the were you going to do to him slaughtered the Borgwin wanted him to get to Karen I oh. was only supposed to point the lump in the right direction once he arrived in Dalamil then you turned up well go on then if you're going to end me end me you're not worth the effort now be gone before I change my mind <laughs> Fucking coward! I need to find goods. Right now. <laughs> Not a coward. You're the one who's about to die for failing to do what he's supposed to do. Get your filthy paws off me, you naughty painted lout! Stop calling me names! And stop spreading their horrible lies about Nan! <laughs> well, that will be easy enough. For they are not lies. Every last word is true. And she must pay for her crimes in blood. <laughs> blood? Goose, are you all right? He, he, he's gonna kill Nan! He said she had to pay in blood! After what she did, it is only right. She ruined my life and the lives of countless others. That oh, really? loathsome harpy's very existence is a crime, and I will not allow it to continue. Oh, I just shove a sword through your belly. Goots, was it? I have no quarrel with you, only with your employer. Run along now. You need not pay for her sins. No. No. I don't care what she did. I won't let you hurt Nan. Promise me you won't hurt her. Or I'll... Or I'll... Or I'll kill you myself! <laughs> Goots, you don't have it in you. Goots, no. Enough, all of you! Hey, it's Karen. Karen. But how did you... You're a sight less clever than you think you are, the pair of you. <laughs> Did you think I wouldn't notice the two of you slinking off together? <laughs> the whole thing got me thinking. Who in Dalamil might bear me a grudge? And a certain snivelling shit I ran afoul of in my fairy years came to mind. Though it was just Bogan back then, wasn't it? I thought the years might have taught you some sense. But I see you're the same pants pissing craving you've always been. <laughs> what Karen. was it we called you? Wet legs. <laughs> you. You bitch. <laughs> Everything that happened. It was all your fault. And now you'll finally pay for what you did to me. So did you like... Have an issue peeing in your pants. Goose, you. If you want a piece of Nan, you'll have to go through me. Fuck. <gasps> you great galoot. <laughs> Out of the way, I can handle this myself. So, wet legs. You remember what you told me when we last met? An eye for an eye. Wise words, sir. Wise words. And now it's time to collect. No! I can't! No! 
What is she doing? Sorry to keep you waiting. Is he... Dead? No. But I reckon he wishes he was. It's an easy going through life, one eye shot of a pair. After all, I should know. You don't mean it. Oh, don't tell me you didn't notice. Lost it to old wet legs back when we were working the same routes. Said I'd stolen from his strong box. I'd done nothing of the sort, mind. But that didn't stop him taking his little revenge. So I took some of my own. Sorry, lost everything. His coin, his clients. Always knew he'd be back one day to claim his due. But he crossed a line dragging poor Goots into this. He didn't hurt you, did he? No, Nan. Still got all my arms, see? Legs, too. <laughs> <laughs> but... What if he comes back again? What if he does? First we take the other eye, then we work our way down. He'll learn his lesson soon enough. <laughs> but something tells me the wet legs has learned it already. <laughs> right. This is bad to get. Let's get you back to the hideaway. You've attracted quite enough attention already. ta -ra, Clive! Remind me never to cross you, Karen. <laughs> okay. Is there carcasses there? No. Someone's got himself in trouble. And it's a. I don't see your master here. So you can start by giving us all the coppers in your purse. I already uh, no. told you, I have nothing. <laughs> then maybe we'll take that pretty outfit and the steel you're wearing. Uh, uh, please! These men are trying to rob me! I'll deal with this. Okay. Thank you. You that one's master, then? <laughs> if you kindly pay the coin he owes us, we can pretend you didn't draw your blade on Republican soldiers. You're no soldiers. Or you can go back to your garrison and I won't report you to your captain. Oh, you're more than welcome to. He hasn't had many visitors since we slit his throat. Put up much of a fight. I'd expect as much from Hugo's faithful, but these were men of the fist. Much has changed in the Republican army since they lost their rock. You've seen this kind of thing before, then? Many times. I was sent here to observe the situation. <laughs> One of Rutherford's men. Yep. He sent me to look for you. Well. Then you have my thanks. I fancy I could defend myself against one, perhaps two, but a whole regiment. But I arrived in Dalamil several days ago, but when I called upon the captain of the local garrison to make inquiries, his men confiscated my effects and locked me in a cell. The captain is no more, and his men make the rules now. Fortunately, I was able to bribe my way free. 
Only to be stopped again by those soldiers you so kindly dispatched. What of the Fist Central Command? Surely they wouldn't allow such lawlessness amongst their ranks. Probably I would not, imagine like, they are unaware much. of it. Most of the army has fallen back to the capital and hunkered down behind her walls. Those who weren't recalled now rule the fringes unchecked, answering to no one but themselves. Sounds about right. It's worse than we imagined. You should return to Rosaria. It's not safe here. I'll find a caravan heading north. Uh, you won't mind if I borrow one of these soldiers' coin purses? <laughs> they got you up. Not at all. Now, to find this second associate of Rutherford's. If he was bound for Oriflam, I'll start at North Reach and see if I can pick up his trail. Okay. Left. All right. Safe. No bad there either. There's a lot of road between here and the capital. Rutherford's man could be anywhere. Uh, 80 yards over here. Let's see the road is here. If you're with the others, I'm not. 
They've already relieved me of my belongings. Would you like a back? I'm not. I'm looking for someone who was sent here by a man named Rutherford. And then you found him. <laughs> I'm Alastair Rockford, attendant to the Lady Ariane of House Wellesley. Of the seven high houses of Rosaria. <laughs> it's been a long time since last I saw my great aunt. Is she well? Oh. My Lord Marquis? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, she is. The Lady Dowager has granted me leave to assist your Uncle Stuart. I was on my way back from the old capital when I saw some <laughs> villagers being robbed on the road here. Bandits. They looked more like field hands, but it didn't matter in the end. I did what I could to help the victims, but all it earned me was a pommel to the temple. Which way did they go? South, toward the gate. All right. I'll take care of them. Found a nurse I've met enough of their kind. <laughs> you head back to Northreach. Visit the Vale. Tell them I sent you. Thank you. I shall. Founder be your shield. They just couldn't resist, could they? Sure. <laughs> One's ours, pretty boy. Make for the town while you can. There may be more bandits nearby. You don't need to tell me twice. Many thanks, traveler. This looks to be all of them. Oh. I thought I told you to make for the Vale. <laughs> and stand by as ill might befall the heir to the Ducal throne. It's just Clive. And I'm fine. Which is more than can be said for you. I will survive. Oh. Strange that the garrison wouldn't intervene in such a brazen attack so close to their gates. The garrison have their hands full inside the city. Some days they don't even send out patrols. Ooh. There are few hands left to work the fields, and even fewer to transport the grain. The market stalls are nearly bare, and the price for what remains is exorbitant. It's not uncommon to see a fight break out over a crust of bread. Ooh. When I said the ones who attacked me didn't have the look of bandits, I meant it. They were probably just desperate. Oh, those guys look like Rockford. the bandits. Listen to me. If you are to continue your investigation, you first need to seek the attention of a healer. Okay. I... Of course. I shall return to Northreach right away. But allow me to thank you first. Had you not happened along, I... Don't thank me. Thank them. Rutherford. It was he who sent me. I suppose he'll be wondering where I've got to. I shall send a pistolus as soon as I'm able. 
Good day. My uncle certainly has his work cut out for him. If it isn't already too late. <laughs> I should go and tell Rutherford that his colleagues are still in one piece. I see you're still here. The rest's location affords a constant flow of traders, and with it, a constant flow of information. True. Speaking of which, I received word from both my associates. They have resumed their investigations, thanks to you. I only happen to be in the right place at the right time. They both seem to think the realm's prospects rather grim. I am afraid that grim would be putting it lightly. Storm is in crisis, and if we are to free her, we must work quickly. And we must work together. Such is your Lord Uncle's wish, as it is mine. It seems the hideaway has lost its appetite. So, did you have that word with Tomes then? Yeah. I did, and he was as helpful as ever. He told me exactly where to look, in fact. And what precisely will I be cooking up? Or is it better not to know? Blueback wyvern liver. And uh, a herb known as Saint's Bonnet. Ah, wyvern livers, was it? Well, at least it weren't actual worms, I suppose. What if? Now then, you stay worms. right where you Does are. Like I've got some cooking sorts. to do. Let's hope these grand old chefs of yore knew what they were on about. Doesn't look too bad, actually. And here we have it. Fried Mortress of Skyworm. Ivan's offered to make sure it's fit for consumption. Well, I say offered. He as good as begged. And rightly so. Is there any higher honor than partaking in a slice of culinary history? <laughs> So, not fit for consumption then. No, this guy just has what witchery is same response. The crackle of the crust gives way to an almost violent richness. Yet it is the piquant kiss of the saint's bonnet that tames this savage dish. It is Order a Ramsey total force. These? A force of nature even. A maelstrom of flavour and sensation. A graceful beast emerging from centuries of slumber. <laughs> I think he likes it. Well, I can't quite tell with all that nonsense he's talking. But I reckon you might be right. It was decent then, I take it. Decent? It's remarkable. 
And I defy any man to say a word <laughs> to the contrary. This dude is just Sit. weird. Might I suggest that you command a party of your finest men and women to procure a dozen blue bat wyverns forthwith? I'll give it some thought. <laughs> Nothing like a dish of cold vengeance to foul the gut. Uh, I'm sorry, Nan. I, I didn't mean to make things worse. I just thought I had to protect you. Like you've protected me. Aye. Well, someone had to. Your parents certainly didn't give a whip for your well-being. Reckon the both of us would be worse off if I'd not taken you on. You've always been me right eye, Goots. <laughs> and I'd have you stay that way. So don't you dare go looking for trouble again. Well, I will. If you ever need help, I'll do it again and again. And you can't stop me. I like Bye, you big lump. Fine. Play the hero if it makes you happy. Thanks, Nan. I won't let you down. There's nothing he wouldn't do for you. That's as may be. But if he's ever to make his own way in life, he'll need to start looking out for himself as well. But well, he then, loves you, Dad. He'll need people to watch his back, just like you did in Dalamil. Don't think I didn't appreciate that. Of course. His family. Stop it. You make me one good eye, mister. I don't go thinking that'll do you any favours. A potion today will cost you the same as it did yesterday. Would expect it. Any other way, Dad. Let me tell you a story, Clive. Oh? All right. Them rumours wet legs were spreading. Might be they weren't just tales plucked out of thin air. You see, there was a time when I weren't too particular about who I sold steel to, so long as they paid me the right price. Oh? Some women lust after blood, others after flesh, but me? I were always one for gold. <laughs> And to satisfy that lust, I sold to opposing armies, stabbed my every client in the back, made myself the most hated woman in the twins. But then one day, one day I met a man who made me a different kind of offer. Said so he'd give me access to a realm wide community of like minded individuals in constant need of steel and sundries. On the condition I sold to him and his alone. Was that the first time you met Sid? Aye. And I fell right into his damn trap. <laughs> he was true to his word, so I ended up being true to mine. And I soon started making the best profits I've seen since taking up the trade. And all without aiding or abetting any outlaws. Except Sid himself, that is. He told me about his plan to topple the Mother Crystals, you know. He said that with them gone, the realm would want for all manner of things. An opportunity for the likes of me to mint Gil. Why, I reckon an enterprising individual could find herself the richest damn in the twins. And that's when he had me. I emptied my stores that day and moved into the Ardaway proper. And the rest, as they say, is ancient bloody history. Very A dozen years on, and I'm still not the richest damn. <laughs> not for lack of trying, mind. But I can say that I have never been happier. You've all shown me there are some things more precious than Gil. That there are. So don't you go messing it all up. Or you'll have me to answer to. You got it, Dad. I 
like that Still story. Alive, are you? The, her past. One purse weighing you down. You're rubbing me blind, you know. You'll not I find mean, a better price than that. Past is always very important. Finished, are you? And, uh... But the more you see of Sid, the more it looks that he was just trying to better everyone. Come to claim your just desserts. Here you are. Best of luck out there, Sid. Here's your hide, as requested. I worried you might never return. Quickly, let me see it. Here it is. <gasps> oh, as supple as a maiden's cheek, yet as adamant as her virtue. <laughs> this is everything I had hoped for and more. Clearly, my trust in you was not misplaced. You must be a hunter of considerable talent to have bested the beast with nary a scratch. Join me as my honored partner. With my means and your might, we shall be as wealthy as the merchant kings of Zemeckis. I don't plan on making a habit of this. I'm busy enough as it is. Very well. Though I believe fate had a hand in our meeting, it would be unbecoming of me to beg. You would. Do not allow me to keep you from being about your business. Here, for the hide. Thank you, sir. 